Today on CityCast Philly, last week we had a conversation about the criticisms of the city's ambitious initiative to clean every block in every neighborhood. Some residents felt, well, you know, at least something's being done, while others say the litter just came back or their block never got cleaned at all. Well, Casey Cooklick, Deputy Director of the Office of Clean and Green Initiatives, the office that runs the citywide cleanup, has a turn to respond to the complaints and say what the city's doing to try to get Philly as clean as possible. We've also invited him to share how they're planning to take this initiative a step further. It's Wednesday, November 20th. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Casey, tell us what you do. You're one of the people in charge of trash for the city. So like, what do you tell people that you do when you go to a party or something? Because I'm sure they have questions or complaints about trash. I'm the deputy director in the Office of Clean and Green Initiatives, which is a new office that Mayor Parker set up uh, when she came into office in January to deliver on her campaign message and her promise to Philadelphia of making the city the safest, cleanest and greenest big city in the nation with economic opportunity for all. So our office, there's seven of us. Um, We're lean, but we work very closely with partners at the Department of Sanitation, the Community Life Improvement Program, the Commerce Department's Taking Care of Business Program on various cleaning and greening initiatives that the mayor would like to see happen in her term and in her administration. Um, So that's what I do. So it's a lot of like departments working together on this one Philly United citywide cleaning and greening program, right? That And that is but one program that we're all working together on. So one of the mayor's signature kind of messages and directives to the people that work for her is that we can't have any more silos in city government and we can't have operating departments out there doing their own thing when what they do and how they meet people's needs and respond to, to service requests and clean neighborhoods and improve quality of life is dependent on us working together. Like we cannot have these silos that departments have been tending to operate in continue because if you think about specifically quality of life, but I think this probably applies to any number of things that the city has to respond to citizen concerns about. Quality of life, it doesn't matter if your block has been cleaned, if an abandoned vehicle is still parked at the corner. It doesn't matter if there's graffiti that's been removed from the building next door if the potholes are still rutting your street, right? Like we want to make sure that we are working together with the various departments that are responsible for doing those things um, such that we're addressing quality of life issues in a much more comprehensive, proactive and kind of place-based way. And that is an ethos and a, a mindset that we want to apply to all of our work. The citywide cleaning program over the summer was just one program one big effort to start to realize that vision and launch it and deliver it in a way that, again, that people can see, touch and feel. The mayor's mantra is to have a government that is super visible to to neighbors and to residents. And we thought with the summer citywide cleanup, that was a great first step for us to take in that direction. Okay, so let's talk about that summertime cleanup. Can you tell us the numbers? What were the stats? Like how many workers were involved? How many blocks did you get? We got over 18,000 blocks, and I'm actually looking at a, um, a chart here that captures all of this data because one of the really great things about the citywide cleanup, too, was that we were able through a really innovative use of a, an app called Quick Capture, which is on, you can download it on your phone. We could download it to city employees' phones for free as part of the Esri suite, which is a GIS application. So it's place-based and it can geolocate where things happen. So Mm -hmm. we were able to give our crews access to this app and they were able to literally take a picture and record every single instance of a quality of life improvement that they made over the course of that 13 week cleanup. And we could look on the back end of our system and see a map of the city. And if you can imagine just a map of Philadelphia starting to fill in over those 13 weeks of the citywide cleanup with little indicators, little kind of logos of different things that had been done. That's a lot of data. It's a ton of data. And there were all told over 60,000 quality of life actions is how we termed them. So that Mm -hmm. could be anything from cleaning a block to removing an abandoned automobile, like I said, to removing an instance of graffiti or more instances of graffiti on a block, paving a pothole, cleaning an inlet, cleaning, greening a vacant lot, removing illegal dumping, 
I could go on and on down the list. We had school, the school district of Philadelphia was involved. Uh, the parks department was involved. This was a true kind of public private partnership that involved quasi governmental agencies, nonprofit groups. We had, um, the T Taking Care of Business program, which I mentioned our office works closely with, those groups were involved in the cleanup and using the app as well. So we had everyone that we know in our orbit kind of chipping in um, to get this done. And again, like I said, we were able to kind of look at all of that work that had been done on the back end. And we saw a map that over the 13 weeks, you can imagine just filled in with all of these logos, the tiles, we called them. And you could click on each one and see a picture of what happened so that we knew the work was getting done, which frankly, a lot of people sometimes doubt the city is able to get any work done and that we're being responsive to, to three and one requests and calls that we get. And this map was definitive proof that, you know, we were we were doing that. So what happens next? So once a crew member captures the quality of life issue and then it gets fixed, does that icon get removed from the app so you can see like the progress? It gets filled in, in fact. So. We, at the end of the 13 weeks, had a map that, like I said, had 60,000 icons on them, each of them a different quality of life action, like I said, from a street clean to a car removed to a graffiti painted over. So you could click on each one and see a photo. And we're still thinking about how do we want to make this information public? We did have a right. version of the map that I think you maybe you saw on our website that was able to summarize the cleaning and greening and quality of life improvements that were happening in, in any given areas for sort of on a numerical basis. But the again, the backside of that app, of that map, you can see all the photos and all of the kind of the work that's been done in any given area at any given time. Casey, any lessons learned with the data from this app? So one of the tweaks that we want to make going forward is, yes, we did miss some blocks because we went on trash and recycling collection routes, which are slightly fewer than the total number of blocks in the city. Um, but with our new district-based residential cleaning program, which is a proactive street cleaning, removing illegal dumping, performing hand washing, um, weed trimming, that sort of thing that the mayor launched that actually just started September 16th. So right after the citywide cleanup, this program launched. And those folks are going by 100 blocks. So we do we now have made an adjustment where we're able to cover more blocks with our regular routes. We had to use the rubbish and, coll and recycling collection routes um, for the summer citywide cleanup, which, which meant that we missed a few. But we also went out and if we heard from a neighbor and they said, you guys didn't come down my street, we sent a crew out there to go down their street. And again, we were able to track everything on the back end to see exactly where we had gotten to. You know, this is all just so interesting. We're going to pause the conversation right here. But when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the criticisms that people had to say about the citywide cleanup program. That's after the break. So you obviously have heard the criticisms about the citywide program. And it wasn't just trash, too, that was cleaned up. Particularly, people complain also about large items like styrofoam containers, tires, mattresses, and all sorts of dumping. And you've also heard that when blocks are clean, the trash comes back quickly. So how are you all responding to that? So the first thing I'll say is that we never intended the citywide cleanup as a be all end all. It was merely the first step in a much larger strategy that we're putting into place to get the city cleaner and greener. So that yes, that means that we're going to be repeating it, right? It'll be twice a year that we'll have this kind of place based uh, big operation where we're bringing the agencies together and, and attacking quality of life issues in a place based manner. But we're also, like I said, we introduced the district-based residential cleaning program shortly after the completion of the first citywide cleanup. And that means that there's 10 council district-based crews out there right now today proactively cleaning the streets and making sure that dumping is removed. Like I said, that the weeds are being cut down, all these things that those crews are equipped to do. And illegal dumping is a huge problem. The city acknowledges that. We are, are well aware. It's like I think the number two 311 request that we get is... Oh, really? uh, illegal okay. dumping. And so there are many different things that we have in place to try to help with that. And I'll go through a few here in detail. One is um, we are going to be introducing twice weekly trash collections in December in all of South Philly and Center City. We'll be receiving twice weekly trash collections because one of the things that dumping 
that we see when we look at 311 requests in particular is a lot of the illegal dumping happens from residential households that are, if you can imagine, a you know, four or five person family in a multifamily building in a high density area of the city, they don't have a lot of space to store their trash. They don't have a yard. They probably don't have much sidewalk space or curb space to put a big bin. And so when their trash fills up over the course of a week, they're not going to let it sit in their kitchen or in their living room or what have you. They're going to put it out on the corner right. because they simply don't have the space to store it. And so we're we're going to be introducing that service twice weekly collections, which we think will cut down a significant amount on the amount of household residential household trash that gets left at a corner, put into a park, um, put onto a vacant lot, right? That's that's where we see a lot of these things happening. So that's number one. And that will be happening all year? Twice weekly collections will be all year. It will be in starting phase one, as we say, will be in South Philly and Center City, but there will be a phase two. Um, ultimately, we do intend to, to go wherever the service is required. You can imagine places like Mount Airy or the far Northeast, they have space to store their trash. Probably won't be providing the service to areas like that, but in high density neighborhoods where there's not a lot of space to store trash, we do intend to expand beyond South and Center City. This is permanent or a pilot program? It's permanent. Oh, wow. This is going to be exciting for people. It's very exciting. Um, and this is part of the mayor's one Philly uh, budget, the FY25 budget and the Office of Clean and Green Initiatives has been spearheading this that program in conjunction with the Department of Sanitation. And it is very exciting. And um, part of a, again, a kind of much more comprehensive strategy to get the city cleaner and greener than just the summer citywide effort, which, again, I thought had huge benefits, but is is only the first step and was only the first step. So I will I will continue, I guess, too. Um, the district based cleaning, twice weekly collections, the collaboration of departments. We've applied with a couple of community organizations to the William Penn Foundation has an illegal dumping um, RFP out on the street where they are actually change, changing their grant making strategies really in response to a lot of the concerns that, you know, not just we at the city, but, you know, when I worked in the nonprofit space, folks had around quality of life. And so the foundation has made a change in their strategies to um, allocate funding, philanthropic funding for combating illegal dumping. And the city is applying alongside two community organizations that we work really closely with to hopefully fund an education public outreach campaign around the negative consequences of illegal dumping and all of the resources that folks can draw on from the city to help deal with it. And so I started this, this kind of answer by saying, you know, I'm going to get into a few of these things in detail. The last thing I will say, because I think you started with bulk collection, is that we reintroduced the bulk collection program right. also about a month or two ago. So that's by appointment. Uh, residents can make, uh, they can go onto the, the Philadelphia website and they can make an appointment for bulk items. I think it's up to four, for free. Um, a couch, a, an old TV, old appliances, and the sanitation department and their crews will come and pick up those items, which, again, we think will be part of the solution, hopefully, to to mitigate illegal dumping in, in the city. And again, as a new service, a new program that um, we're rolling out as part of this overall fight against litter and illegal dumping and trying to improve quality of life in our city. And in regards to the Every Block, um, Every Neighborhood program, can you tell me more about the plan going forward with that? We are currently in the second go round of the citywide cleanup, right? That's right. And so the plan is to have that occur twice per year. Uh, there's over a dozen city agencies and again, nonprofit partners, quasi-governmental agencies like SEPTA and the school district that are all participating in that. I think in the fall will be slightly different because we, you can imagine sometimes it's too cold for the streets department to pave potholes, right? If school is in session, it may be more difficult to do a deep clean of a school facility. But we're relying on those departments to tell us you know, what's different this time around. What can you do to tackle these items in a place-based way? And by and large, they've been cooperative and excited to kind of do this. The other thing that the citywide cleanup, the now twice yearly citywide cleanup does, is it gets all of these agencies and employees feeling like they're part of something bigger and feeling like they're doing something more than picking up some trash, removing some graffiti, cleaning an inlet, whatever it may be, they can see and are starting, I think, really to feel, and we hear this from the folks that we work with in the operating um, sides of the, all of these departments, that they feel like they're part of something bigger. They feel like they're, they're part of the mayor's kind of clean and green message. They're, 
they can see a direct line between her vision for the city and how it's happening on the ground. And so, again, I don't think you can place, you know, a, a value on that kind of culture change that, I, that we are really seeking to, to employ through this work. Casey, when we come back, I'd like to talk more about some of the longer term trash goals and other ways that the city is planning to clean things up. That's after the break. Casey, how do you sustain all of this, though? Because the trash keeps coming back. So, you know, we're a pretty dirty city. You know, it, it doesn't have to be that way. So how, how do you make this all work for years to come? Well, the mayor has sustained funding in the budget for many of these initiatives. That's one thing. We do need resident participation for sure. We will we will need to have um, you know more folks participating in clean their, clean their block days. We've got a um, PMBC, the Philadelphia More Beautiful Committee, which is the block captain network, which relies on I think it's over six thousand block captains throughout the city. We need community participation. So there's a number of things underway that we're doing to get people bought in. There's an anti-litter campaign that's on the street in the market right now. There are other education efforts I mentioned that we would like to do like around illegal dumping specifically to, to get folks kind of understanding, okay, here's why it's not okay to dump your trash at the Big Belly or in the park or what have you. And we're giving them programs and resources to help with that, like twice weekly collections. And we're going to need, I think, too, a series of enforcement efforts as well. Uh, often, for instance, we hear from the business community that things that lead to litter conditions in alleyways downtown are businesses that are not following directions or not following the rules around dumpsters and how they should be using their dumpsters and how often they should be getting their dumpsters cleaned or, or the trash picked up from them. So there's an, an enforcement, a large enforcement component to this too. Um, illegal dumping is another one where we've recently, I think, increased the fines for illegal dumping and we've seen that no longer are businesses, construction companies that would kind of dump in places, no longer are they kind of accepting the fines as just a cost of doing business uh, because we increased them, I think, from $300 per instance to $5,000 per item that gets dumped. Oh, wow. OK. So there's significant changes underway in the enforcement side. And I think that we've even, if my numbers are correct, there's upwards of 20 cases that have been referred to be prosecuted or and or the fines have been assessed and levied and the city's recouped like over a million dollars in fines that can then be put wow. towards sustaining programs. So um, all of those things are going to be required to sustain what we're trying to do here. Uh, but I think culture change, operational changes within departments here at the city, the investments the mayor is making in our team and in others, all of those things are critical. But we're at the start of a journey that's going to take some time. And I think the really exciting part to me, again, is that we've got folks working together and kind of rowing in the same direction in, in a way that they haven't before. What's the status of having regular street sweeping in the city? Yeah, mechanical street sweeping. There's 14 areas this year that are covered by mechanical brooms. They are, that's based on the litter index. So we took um, a look at each of the neighborhoods. Um, there's an annual litter index where folks are going out and assessing the conditions of the streets. And we use that data to determine where is mechanical street sweeping going to be most effective. And my, I believe that we intend to expand the program um, each year to different areas, to more areas. 14 is the most that we've done to date. And we've done over 35,000 miles. I think there's 2,500 tons of debris that was removed through mechanical street sweeping. So it's working and we'd like to see it expanded. It's a question, again, of resources and um, you know, as they, as we, as we move through different budget seasons and budget years, um, we're going to need to advocate for that. Can I just tick off two smaller issues about trash that I hear people always bringing up, like the overflowing big belly trash cans? Can there be more, especially when, you know, there's pizza boxes and piles of trash all around it? So the mayor is expanding Big Bellies by, in, again, in her budget, it's fully funded. We're rolling it out now. I think we're going from 500 to 1,000 Big Bellies. So we're currently mapping the expansion of that program and implementing new Big Bellies along commercial quarters in particular. But also we're going to be going out, I think, for the first time, there will be Big Bellies in well-trafficked like residential neighborhoods too. So previously, there were, I think, only along commercial corridors for the most part. And those will be expanded and, and newly, in, you know, the older ones that are at the end of the life cycles are being replaced. 
And we're also going further out into residential neighborhoods with more big bellies. Some neighbors will complain that they're there. Others want them back. It's a very fine line that we have to walk to strategically place them to where they're going to be most effective. But we do know that they they help with litter conditions. I think we, the city did a behavioral study that showed that. So yes, that program is being expanded. We will have more of them. And the ones that you see will be newer and have different features. And they'll be emptied on a regular basis? They will be. Yes, they're emptied on a regular basis now. And we do have the software and the software does work to tell us where they're getting full, where they're near full, where they're at capacity so that we can manage the operations that way. And one more. Recycling bins without yes. lids, they get blown all over the streets yeah. on windy days. Anything that we could do there? That comes to, down to me to education. Um, I think it's expensive to have the lids, believe it or not. But we do want folks like tying down their trash. Nothing makes me more disheartened than when I see bags of cardboard bags that are just like, you know, there's cardboard in them, there's bottles. And if it rains, which it hasn't been raining recently, but if it does rain, um, those bags get ripped apart. Trash spills out all over the place. We are launching a Yes Philadelphia Recycles campaign. There's okay. this kind of myth out there that the city doesn't actually recycle, that the stuff all goes in a truck and it goes to the same place. That's not true. Waste Management, which is one of our waste partners, um, actually, I just toured their new materials recovery facility or MRF, where you have um, all the city's recycling being processed. And you can see they're taking out the aluminum, they're taking out the plastic bottles, they're taking out the cardboard and bailing them and separating them. And they're all going to their respective um, clients who make use of those, re make reuse of those products. So uh, we will kind of, be, I think, be doubling down and stepping up our education efforts to make sure that folks know this is what you can recycle. Here's how best to recycle. Here's how not to contaminate your recycling because we don't want greasy pizza boxes or propane tanks, but we do want your, your plastics, your glass, your aluminum, your metal, et cetera. All right. To wrap up, what would you like to tell our listeners to tell Philadelphians about how you determine what success looks like with all of these initiatives, with all of these updates and changes and newness? And how do we just better communicate? Because you talked about communication within the departments, but how do we as Philadelphians better communicate to you? That's a great question. Um, and I'll say a few things. One is, Always use 311. We actually saw 311 requests spike during the citywide cleanup, which was is maybe a little bit counterintuitive. But when we think about it, it's we hope people are seeing the city out there working for them. And they know they've heard about this citywide cleanup. And they say, oh, I know there's crews that are supposed to be going around and doing these things. Let me make sure that I get that abandoned automobile at my corner into the 311 system. So tell us. 311 is a great resource. I would also say get involved by being a block captain or getting involved with your local parks friends group. So another great resource. Um, we haven't talked much about greening, but that is my background. And I think we can really leverage greening and tree planting and the quality of our parks and public spaces to sustain cleanliness over time and improve quality of life over time. Because when people take more pride in their communities, they're going to be less likely to litter or to tolerate the kind of things that we see sometimes. So Get involved. Like I said, block captains, park friends groups, recycle, <laughs> follow your trash collection days. There's a million things that people can do to kind of get involved in this. And they can find all of them at our website, I think, officeofcleanandgreen.org. And there's a whole list of resources that folks can take advantage of to basically join the fight, as we say. Casey Cookluck, Deputy Director of the Office of Clean and Green Initiatives. Thank you so much for talking with me on CityCast Philly. Thank you so much, Trinae. Appreciate it. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about the city's plans for tackling trash, tell your neighbors and your block captain. Rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.